We're back in the tiny garden and it is the first week of July and I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to show you around the garden. So much has changed and I've got so many things I'm really really looking forward to showing you today. One of which is actually my blueberry that has started to colour up and I only noticed it because my dog, Rubu, she was sniffing in the actual plant <laughs> so I thought wonder what she's up to because she does it to the raspberries and I let her have the raspberries that are kind of low down and I, yeah I saw her in the blueberries and I thought to myself oh it must be ready so I did pick one off and they were actually delightful so a couple of them are still kind of under under ripe but the ones that have a slight little bit of bounce in them are perfect. So it's been about six weeks since we did our last garden tour and so much has changed. You might be able to see behind me um, that everything is looking super super different. Obviously we've no broad bean um, but I'll take you around and I'll show you individually what all sorts of plants that I have growing and how everything's doing. So we're going to start at the front as we always do and I'm just going to show you what's growing at the minute. I have some more herbs, I've got the lemon thyme that was featured in my very, very, very first YouTube video. So that's kind of um, a little bit sentimental to me and it's just started to flower, which is super cool. Those flowers are absolutely beautiful. The bees absolutely love them and it's such a beautiful variety of thyme. So it's the lemon thyme. This one's looking a little bit yellow, so I might need to just give that a little dressing of compost, just to give it a little bit of a boost. And then celery which has got like, a, it's called Red Venture, so it has kind of like burgundy, sort of dark, red, purpley stalks, but it's looking, it's looking okay. The ones in the main planted area look a bit better, but we'll still get a few off of those just to put into like soups and stews. You saw my raspberries there in the last garden tour, but I suppose what I didn't show you since is I've been putting some organza bags around them, is that what they're called? Um, yeah, I've been putting round little netted bags to protect all the fruit from the blackbirds because the blackbirds love my garden. Um, so yeah, we've picked a load of fruit off of this. And then my second zone of potatoes are looking really strong, really, really strong. So they're Sarpamira and I planted those in, was it kind of between end of May and beginning of June? So they're looking super, super healthy. The foliage is looking super strong, so no signs of any kind of fungus pressure, which is great. And I do need to just go in and top them up with soil because I do. There's no other reason than they just need to be topped up with soil. So I need to take a trip to the shop to get some compost for those. And then in the corner here, it's a little bit of a busy corner, I have my plum tree that's looking absolutely fab. And then the marigolds that I planted at the bottom and I think it looks so nice. So it's offering a little bit of ground cover and just the most beautiful pop of color. And then I've got a little table here full of random bits. So I've got some extra leeks in there and I have some winter onions, which I need to pot up into individual little cell trays because they look like they're struggling a little bit in there now, but these should be for overwintering and I grew these from seed. So these are called Shinkanu onion. So I'll keep you posted on how they go and I'm hoping to get these into the ground in autumn when the tomatoes are finished. And then I'll take you over to my blueberries. Now I know the leaves are looking a little bit like they're lacking something. Now this variety does go sort of a brownie sort of color later in the season. But I do think this is probably like a nutrient problem. So I have top dressed it with some fertilizer, but I might get a little extra supplement with a liquid feed for this. But it has started to fruit 
and ripen. So there's a couple of purple ones in the back and then they've got that gorgeous, gorgeous blue one right there, which looks wonderful. And there's a couple around the back and this is really good timing because obviously the production on the raspberries is slowing down a little bit. And these should be ready when the raspberries are almost finished. So a great little kind of follow on for fresh fruit from the garden. So I'm really, really pleased about that. And then in between the two blueberries, I have a catmint or a napita, and I have some chives and a small bucket of lettuce that's looking a bit sad because I did pick that for dinner yesterday. Um, but as you can see, the rubu is throwing stones in the back of it and then sticking her head in and then the leaves snap. So it is looking a bit sad. Um, you can see there's one there that she's snapped in half, <laughs> but I don't mind. She has a great time throwing stones around the garden. Um, and then I have a gladioli. So I just popped some into a pot and they're growing okay, I think. So it'd be nice to get a, a late flush of flowers in the summer, which is super nice. These will grow really, really tall. And then maybe when the raspberries have been cut back, they might take the place of the raspberries, but I'll keep you posted on what I do with those. And then next to my blueberries, are some leeks. So I potted up some leeks. So I think there's what, five or six in there. I've done them really, really deep. You can see, made like a hole with a makeshift dibber and I popped the leeks in. So these will be ready kind of more winter, sort of maybe December to January, February. I had these sown in February of this year. So they do take quite a while to grow, but I'm really like happy that they've taken off because I bought leeks from plugs last year from the shop because um, I, I didn't sow them early enough but if you go down to the shops now you might actually find some leeks um, ready to pop in but it's probably a bit too late to sow them from seed you need to do them really early in the season yeah I'll take you around now and see my patty pan which is doing wonderful so I gave that a feed as well and it's looking beautiful and I'm really, really pleased with it because obviously we transplanted this one a couple of weeks back and um, I wasn't sure how it would take, but my friend Ali from My Rusty Garden said that it should grow perfect to the size of the pot that it's in. So I'm really pleased with that and she grows all of her squash in pots. So I'm thrilled to find out that little nugget of information. But yeah, aren't the flowers gorgeous? I don't think there's any female flowers yet seem to be mostly male ones I think but I'm not sure like there is a little lump at the end of that one but I'm not too sure but yeah they're looking healthy so that's the one in the larger pot and then I have a littler one over here so obviously it's growing a little bit smaller but perfect to the size of the pot that it's in and then I have one down the end of the garden there and then moving around, got my obviously my lovely water butt. And then I have my tomatoes, which you've seen quite a lot of, but obviously they're flying up now and they're doing really, really well. So they're up to the, the top of the, the stand now, which is pretty cool. And then the spinach underneath is finished. So I've underplanted with the basil that I showed you and a few rows of radish. So that's looking really, really healthy and positive. And then I did see this weird branch that's coming out from the main stem. And then there's this kind of like new main stem trying to grow out of where the fruit is forming. So I wasn't too sure about it, but I noticed it as well on another friend of mine, who's also called Ali, um, over at the right pear plot. And she said that it's best to take it off. So if I can get it off. So I'll just remove that, but isn't it strange? Like it's forming a fruit and then it's formed like this main head or lead stem. Isn't it weird? I don't know if that's normal, but I've taken it off now. <laughs> I'm sure there might be more. <laughs> so I've got some beautiful flowers and some herbs, some sage, and some seed trays, so some lettuce, some more lettuce, some beetroot, and some mint, and some onions. 
and a parsley plant that I'm leaving to go to flower. I mean, how wonderful are those tomato fruits? Aren't they amazing? Super happy with them. There's one around the corner that I want to show you that's really, really long. Oh, and before I go around the corner, I must show you this. It's my pumpkin. So this is one of the two pumpkins that I've got growing. Same variety, I think they're called kabocha. Yeah, they're called kabocha. So this is for the pumpkin competition I'm doing with some other GIY growers in um, Ireland. And it's just started to form a pumpkin. So, watch out girls. <laughs> I could be a winner. <laughs> although it's not in the ground, so that does need to get in the ground. But the plan was to put that where the strawberries are and haven't done that. So not sure about that now. <laughs> I'll just show you the, um, the tomatoes. So yeah, I've got some wonderful trusses of tomatoes here. I mean, that is just super duper long. I cannot wait for those to turn red. So obviously I didn't take the lower flowers off of this. So that was the first flower that formed very shortly after I transplanted it. And I left them on as an experiment and half I took off. And I found that yes, it's setting fruit a bit quicker, but the ones where I took the flowers off are actually growing a bit taller and the fruit is actually a little bit bigger. But that could also be to do with the fact that the plants at the front are probably getting a bit more sunlight than the one at the back that I left the flowers on in the very beginning. So not a very scientific experiment, but I think I will take the first truss of flowers off in future. The plant just looks a bit stronger, but it's set a load of flower, like a load of trusses. I mean, we're gonna get a huge harvest, hopefully. There's one, two, three, four, five on that one which is awesome. And then we have my flower bed. So there's not much going on in here at the minute. I did transplant some anemone at the back, but I think it's a little bit shaded out. So the gerbera that was in there has died off. So I took that out and then I was sad that there wasn't many flowers. So I transplanted in some marigolds. They're looking really, really cool and they're doing really, really well and my salvia is still going strong and I have one, one little daisy, but not many after that. So I wouldn't say those transplants were that successful with those plants. And obviously the lilies have now finished. And then my strawberries, I'm getting a second flush of flowers on my strawberries. And there's a few in there that I do need to pick, but I don't think I'll do the strawberries in here again. I think it's too wet and it doesn't get very dry in there, like the sun doesn't hit off the soil. So it gets very, very damp and then the wood lice and the slugs have been a bit of a problem. So I think the better use of this space here, next season I'm going to take the strawberries out and probably hang them somewhere in planters. And then next to the strawberries is my celery, which is looking absolutely fab. I love growing celery, it does take a little bit of time and they are quite weak when they first grow, but these are really strong now and I've taken some pickings on these, kind of harvesting it cut and come again. And um, yeah, it's so strong in flavor that you only need like one or two stems in a whole meal. So that's growing great. Beautiful, beautiful color and absolutely amazing, amazing flavor on those. I have another little planter there that I never actually show you guys, but it's exactly the same as the planter that's in front of the um, tomatoes the exact same flowers in it. So I'm hoping that will all cascade down and cover that brick wall into the flower bed and then hopefully do the same the other side. And then my other patty pan is flowering. A couple of them have closed up, so they might just drop off. But yeah, super, super cool. I can't wait to see how this plant grows. It's something new for me this year, the patty pan. So I'm looking to see how that grows. And then I just obviously topped that off with a little bit of uh, blood fish and bone as well. So I've just spun you around and I'm just going to show you now the main garden and everything is looking super healthy and super prolific. So I'm really, really happy. So yeah, this is the main growing space if you haven't seen the garden before and I will take you around. 
So I got the brassica cage finished, which I'm really happy. I'll take that off and I'll show you everything inside. Well, I'll pull back the netting. I have my peppers just next to all the brassicas. They've actually started to flower. Do you see there's a little bud just there? And there's a few more on here. So it's been quite cold. I'm not, these are obviously the first year I'm growing peppers. So I don't know how well they're gonna grow, but they are just budding up now. So that's a good sign. And that one in the back there, in the very back here has been eaten a little bit by the wood lice. So I don't know whether he's just gonna you know, be too stressed to put on any fruit or anything, but I have three that are looking okay. This is my other pumpkin, same variety as the one I showed you around the corner. I have some lettuce planted in that little gap there, and I actually staked and pruned up my, um, my other patty pan that I didn't move, but it's absolute monster of a plant. Can't get over it. So I'm gonna keep trying to prune that and keep it at bay because obviously I want to keep some room for my French beans which are here. And then I've got some beetroot here that I'll actually I'll actually pull that out now. And um that's a nice size beetroot, isn't it? And I'll cook that up. And what I'll do in this space here is I'll probably use these as lettuce leaves and I'll make some room for some carrots to go in there which will be super cool. So then, yeah, I've got my dwarf French beans. I do need to probably come in here and give everything a bit of a liquid feed. I'm just waiting on my um, my seaweed fertilizer to be ready so I can use that. But yeah, it's actually starting to bud a little bit there, which is super cool, despite the cold colder weather, because these are more warm loving plants. And then my salvia in the corner, that's doing okay. Looking lovely. And then underneath this leaf are some spring onions that don't seem to be doing too bad. I mean, they'll do better in full sun, but just trying different things to maximize the space and see how they do. So yeah, super, super happy, but yeah, absolute monster of a plant. And then in that back corner is my sunflower. He looks a little bit sad, to be honest. We've had such harsh weather the last few days. I just think like he's been completely decimated by the harsh weather. He's not fully open looking happy anymore, but absolutely love that little pop of color. And it'd be interesting to see how the seeds and things inside form. So that's nice. I don't know, that's for my competition. I hope I win, but I saw, um, I got a little insight to one of the girls that's, so in the, that's grown theirs. And it's like, it's definitely over two meters. <laughs> so then I've got my my monge too on this side it's absolutely bursting with life at the minute there's hundreds and hundreds of monge too to pick um, I actually can't keep up with it at the minute they're just everywhere um, but they're going to be great now as sides it's really 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 getting productive now this is there is some yellowing on the leaves but I think it's just because it's been in the ground for so long um, but, and it is a yellowy sort of variety but I still think maybe the leaves should be green but it's really really getting productive now which is super cool because it's such a tasty variety this one's called golden sweet and I think I'll definitely grow it again it's really really nice my petunias at the base of it are still doing good I think these ones are absolutely beautiful they're so nice I wish I had more of them and I should have planted them at the front because they are just so gorgeous have another random celery there <laughs> holding on to plants I can't get rid of them and then I'm just gonna scooch around here this is the tomato later that I planted quite late similar to the name but it's setting flowers now which is amazing and then I have the bush variety I think this is this is the costaluto it's got a very, very strange head on it. So I don't know if this is like bolted or something. That doesn't look like it's gonna set through or it doesn't look like a main stem. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Um, it looks strong, but that top bit just looks very bizarre to me. I'm not sure about that. Is that normal? I have no idea. <laughs> And then I have my marigolds, 
my other salvia I probably should shear that back now that it's stopped flowering probably might get a second flush if I shear that back and then I have more petunias that are looking delightful in colour and my cucumber is really really starting to set fruit now see that so this is market more this cucumber variety super super prolific cannot wait for that to start really starting to ramp up its production it's not even fully grown to be honest it's only grown up to here i expect it to grow the full length of this because it did last year and absolute wonderful variety so the fruit can grow quite spiky but i find as it as they mature and then they become kind of ready to pick the spikes kind of dry up and then you can brush them off but don't be surprised if you grow a market more cucumber like this then you find yourself getting stabbed by those little spiky bits and they're done half hurt <laughs> but yeah lots and lots of beautiful flowers coming on that and obviously the main stem is driving on and looking really really strong i think there's a second main stem down here um, these things just grow and grow and grow. See, there's a second main stem down there that I might try and train up just here. I might train that up a different way. And we will have double cucumbers that we had last year because I only did one stem. And then have a little baby one here that still survived. This is the one I actually dropped and I actually pinched the bottom of the stem. Can you see down there? It's like gone really woody, but I actually cracked that stem in half and it survived. So I've left him here next to his bigger sister. And if I get little cucumbers off of that, they'll work nice as gherkins. And then I have my last thing in the garden. It's my tiny sunflower, which is looking kind of cute. It's absolutely small, it's probably like three foot. <laughs> it's so tiny, not even three foot because the bottom of it's all roots. And then I just underplanted that with lettuce, which I've been picking, so it does look a bit sparse. And there's coriander at the front, which again, under huge pest pressure, I've been eaten. Um, it's gone really wispy, it's really stressed out. And then I found another little sunflower in my parsley pot. So I took him out and I put him up. So he will hopefully flower when these ones are done. But yeah, looking lovely. Really chuffed with how everything's looking. This tree here hasn't done well at all. It's... Um, really suffered with these kind of bugs. So this is the cherry tree and um, it's got this black cherry aphid problem and the RHS website said that it would be absolutely fine, the fruit wouldn't drop off and I was only expecting to get about three or four cherries off of it. It's absolutely decimated the plant. I did try soapy water earlier but I think it was just so overtaken by pests that it's pretty much a goner at this stage and I'm really worried that it won't actually survive the winter so that's a little bit of a gardening fail now for the cherry tree a little bit sad about that um, and I feel like the problem might come every year from the research that I've done but the bottom of the pot looks kind of nice <laughs> so what I'm actually going to do is so that I can actually show you inside the brassicas is I'm actually going to pull back the netting so that you can actually see inside it um, just so you can have a proper nosy and at what the plants look like but I think they're looking super super cool at the minute and I'm super happy with their growth aren't they looking wonderful so I've got some kale over here which is looking super strong I'd say I could harvest some of that could I it looks very strong I would love to make a little kale pasta out of that and then have sprouts under here so I've got sprouts I have little lettuces growing just to see what works to try and maximise the space. There's one in the back there. Just looks so awesome. So I need to come in and pick off all these leaves with all the rain. There's a few leaves that are looking a little bit sad, but that will obviously, stuff like this will increase slug pressure, it'll attract them. So yeah. How wonderful are my brassicas looking in my brassica cage? I better put the net back on just in case my nemesis comes and starts to lay her eggs on them. So that concludes uh, the garden tour for July. A um, big thank you to everybody who's tuned in and spent the afternoon in the garden with me today. And I just wanted to say, if you've enjoyed the video, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button 
it really, really helps the channel out and it means um, that I don't know what it means. <laughs> Enjoying it. <laughs> this is so bad. Let's consider hitting the subscribe button uh, for the channel. I'll catch you up in the next one, everybody. Bye.